All right, check this thing out. This is a Denon. This is an AVR 5600. Holy moly, this thing must weigh 60 pounds. Look at look at what's inside this thing. Big old power transformer. That's a toroidal power transformer. It's not just an iron core transformer. There's a couple big old filter caps back there. Those are 15,000 microfarad at, I believe, 71 volts. Let me see if I could swing. I'm just doing this on my cell phone, so maybe you can see something back here. Yeah, 15,000 at 71 volts. Then take a look at this big old heat sink over here. And it's got... Because I know they're going to be generating some heat. It's got a couple fans in it. Anyhow, this unit came in. It is totally dead to the world. Now, this thing is a powerhouse. Rated at 140 watts per channel. I believe that's front, rear, center, and surround. I'm, I'm not quite sure about the surround power. But, uh, yeah, this thing is a monster. Like I said, it's got to weigh at least maybe 50, 60 pounds. Let's take a look at the back of it. Now, it is a bit of an older unit. It doesn't support HDMI input. It doesn't even have component video input. But it does have optical inputs and outputs for your DTS digital audio. Not sure if it even supports Dolby Digital. Okay, so I do have it plugged in right now. And is powered on. I get absolutely no LED on or standby. I should at least get a red or green light on this. No blinks, no nothing. So let's go ahead and I'll uh, get the overhead camera fired up and we'll try to do some troubleshooting. I've printed out some of the preliminary schematics for the power supply and whatnot and we'll see if we can figure out what's going on with this. So the first thing I want to do is verify that we have power coming into the unit. I've already checked all the fuses with an ohmmeter. Everything is perfectly fine, so I'm just going to go ahead. Now I'm using my 117, and I have it on the low impedance mode, so it's going to put about a 3000 ohm load, just to prevent any ghost voltage in case I have an open cord or something. So let's check and see what we got. I've got 128.5 volts coming into it, so that should be adequate to get the unit started. So on this board right here is the standby power transformer down here. The first thing I want to do is verify that the standby power transformer is outputting the voltage that it needs. And so I don't know if this unit has rectifiers on that board or not. I did print out a preliminary schematic like I said. So let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. So here's the AC cord coming in. I verified that we do have power here and it just basically goes straight in to the standby power transformer. And out of the transformer, it comes and it goes to this 2PVA. I'm not sure where that goes. Then it comes back and it goes to AC one and two to this five pin connector that goes to power supply unit four. That is a misprint. It does not go to power supply unit four. It goes over here to power supply unit three. And so AC, AC, they come in here, they go through a full wave bridge rectifier. There is an ICP integrated circuit protector right here. And then a 7806 linear regulator IC to get the six volts for the microprocessor. Also, it's rectified, sent through these two diodes and then through a very small one microfarad filter cap and then a forward bias 7.5 volt Zener diode to get a 5.2 volt reference. And that's the power loss command so that if this voltage voltage is not present, it knows that the power has been removed extremely quickly within a couple of AC cycles so that it can do what it needs to do to save any data that it may have. It's labeled power down right here. So it can try to save any data and write to the EEPROM quickly while there's still some power in the big filter capacitors. So first thing, let's go ahead and see if we have AC one and two right here, and then we'll do some other checks. If we have it, if we don't, then we'll try to figure out why. Okay, so this is the connector right here, and I am interested in pins 1 and 2. And I see that I've got 12 volts on those two pins, so that is perfectly fine. So I think somebody's already been in here because I see this has been resoldered, and that is the standby regulator. So I've got 13.5 volts on the input and 5.8 volts on the output. That is perfectly fine. Let's check for any AC ripple. One-tenth of a volt on the input and effectively zero volts on the output. That should be perfectly fine. The processor should like that with no problems at all. Okay, so let's take a look at the power down transistor right here, TR402. And so let's look at the DC voltage on the base. It should be high. It's only 0.488 volts. The collector should be effectively zero volts. Let's look at AC volts. I've got nothing on the base. I've got nothing on the collector and effectively zero on the emitter as well. 
Well, unfortunately, I think this unit has a bad microprocessor. So I've measured the VDD, which is the five volt power supply. It is there. I've measured the reset. It is getting the reset command. I have my four megahertz crystal on 13 and 14. I get no data on pin 18, which is the serial data, and I get no clock on pin 11, which is the serial clock. These are both stuck at five volts. I do see the B down, which is the power down command from the standby power supply where it has that little one microfarad filter cap. If it loses power, it immediately tells the processor I've lost power. That is working correctly as well. So I'm just gonna show you these things real fast with the voltmeter. So first off, pin 33, the VDD, 4.94 volts, that's perfectly fine. It can run with that. When I remove the power, it does drop down to zero. So it tells me the standby power supply is working fine. So let's take a look at the reset command on pin 12. Here's pin 12, 4.8 volts. Now if I just simply remove power, you can see it drops down. But if I interrupt power and restore it, you can see it, if you look at the bar graph on the meter, it goes down to almost zero. The meter's not fast enough to sample it. So that's off on, and you see the pulse down. In relation to just off, where it gradually subsides. So that tells me that's working fine. Let's take a look at the power down command on pin 16, 4.6 volts. And if I just briefly interrupt power, you can see it shoots to zero instantly. So it's getting the command to power down. Let's take a look at the clock and the data lines real quick. So the serial clock is going to be on pin 11 and it's stuck at five volts. If this were working correctly, I'd expect to see it around four, maybe three volts as it's sending data consistently. It's actually gonna send a clock command. So it's stuck at five volts. Pin 18 is gonna be the serial data line. There's pin 18, once again, stuck at five volts. No data activity whatsoever. Once again, I did measure the crystal, the four megahertz oscillator. We can just take a look with the voltmeter real quick. I see 1.9 volts on one side of the crystal and 2.1 volts on the other side, which means the crystal is oscillating. If the crystal were not oscillating, I would expect to see five volts or zero volts, depending on the state that it's in. So anyhow, I think this is going to be unsuccessful repair. I don't think the customer is going to want to put much money into this for the simple fact that he can purchase a replacement Denon AVR 5600 for $165 with a buy it now price and shipping of only $48. And this comes from Iowa City, Iowa. So anyhow, I really don't think he's gonna wanna put too much money into this. I couldn't even find a replacement microprocessor or board for this unit because of its age. It's from the 90s and parts are just not available for this unit. Unfortunately, gonna be a unsuccessful repair. Well, that's going to be it. The end of the video. I do appreciate you making it to the end of this troubleshooting video. Go ahead, leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the questions and respond when I have time. While you're down there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. I think this one's a goner, unfortunately. Once again, everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone, have a great day. Bye-bye.